Hello everybody, welcome to Whole Family Homestead. Today we are in the Homestead kitchen and I'm going to be walking you through how I make my strawberry vanilla jam. That is our signature flavor here at the Homestead and um, I do sell it in the shop, but it's a local pickup item only right now. So for those of you not in central Indiana, hopefully with this recipe that I'm gonna include down below and uh, this video, you can learn to make it yourself. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through the setup first. These are berries that I have been macerating. Um, we have 10 cups of freshly picked, hand-picked by me and the kids. Um, hopefully you saw that video, strawberries. Macerating in two cups of sugar, and then this is one vanilla bean split. So I split it um, across lengthwise, and then just put it in halves there in with the sugar and the berries and as just an fyi um, these berries have been macerating for longer than they should have been because um we all had some plumbing issues here at the home we can get to them for a few days so they are a little far gone you can see some like bubbles that's actually they're fermenting that's going to cook out when we do the jam so i'm not that worried about it but um these would not be good to be eaten fresh right now and then I also have my lemon with my zester and my juicer and a knife to cut here ready because I do finish each batch of jam with um, some lemon zest and lemon juice. It not only wakes the berries up and gives them a really good flavor, but it also helps the jam set. I've got an instant read digital thermometer. I have um, just a spoon that I will use with this measuring cup. And this will actually be what I skim foam with. They do make foam skimmers. Um, I just never bought one. I don't know, maybe I should try it. But this seems to work all right for me. I have a ladle that I use to spoon the finished jam into jars. This rubber scraper is what I use to help get the jam um, stirred in the pots. And then I have my mason jar lifter, my mason jar funnel, tucked in back here sugar and then we'll combine them in this bowl and then I have all of my mason jars ready to go. Over here we pivot. On the stove top I have my big canning pot ready to go. He is filled with water. He's not quite at a boil yet but he will be soon. And then this is kind of a wide wide but somewhat deep stock pot. Um, you could go even wider. You helps the jam cook a little quicker, which you want because that helps the fruit flavor stay locked in. So you don't wanna cook jam a really long time. You wanna get it as set as quickly as possible in a wide bottom, when a bottom that is in direct contact with as much heat as possible um, will help you do that. One more thing I forgot to mention when we were looking at the jars. Those, these jars have been washed and sanitized in my dishwasher. Um, if you don't have a dishwasher that you feel super confident in, you can also just take a jar and sanitize it in your boiling water before you put the jam in. You just wanna do that so that you're you're sure there's no bacteria. They used to recommend um, sanitizing the lids ahead of time by boiling them in your water bath canner, but actually um, Ball has released a statement saying, please don't do that, and I, I agree with them because it would warp. It would warp the edges, and sometimes you wouldn't actually get a really good seal once they, they had been heated. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with the jam. I'm gonna just pour my berries straight into the stock pot behind me and then I'll remove the vanilla bean and scrape that. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna try to get the camera to where you can see the vanilla bean being scraped. A 
Okay, the strawberries and the split vanilla bean are in the stock pot. I've turned the heat on. So they're gonna start to cook a little bit, but not really, because they just came out of the freezer. Or not the freezer, the fridge. They just came out of the fridge not that long ago. So they're really just gonna come up to temperature while I zest and juice my lemon, and then get my sugar and my pectin put together so we can make the jam. I'll show you guys. <laughs> So as I'm zesting, I'm careful um, only to go down to the whites. The whites are very bitter, so we do not want to add that bitterness to the jam. But the zest, it not only has a lot of flavor, but um, it does help the jam set a little bit better. There's natural pectin here that um, I think just makes the consistency really nice. Plus, you know, they've been macerating for days now um you know two or three days longer than they should have and the the lemon i think just really wakes wakes up that berry flavor like i said and adds just a really nice berry tartness after we've macerated with so much sugar and vanilla bean okay i think that's good so now if i do that you can see i have um move stuff out of the way Move the camera closer if you can get it. So you can see I have a nice pile here. And then all I'm going to do is um, cut my lemon, which I should tell you, I previously, I did not own this style of juicer. I had like, here, I'll pull it out. I'll show you. It's right here. You know, I had like this kind, which I thought was very efficient, right? And I used it for years and years. And then I was watching um, the Tim Tracker and Jen, Jen Tracker, and she, Jen is always using this, and she had a really good trick for using it that I'm gonna share with you, where you just slice off the end, and then um, you like make a cross cut in it at the bottom, and then that's the bottom you put in this little guy so that you get more juice out and I just thought that was so clever so then I went and bought one and I'm really super happy with it so thank you Tim and Jen Tracker okay so I've got the lemon all zested and juiced as you saw um, thank you Tim and Jen again um, especially Jen for that awesome lemon juice trick um, if I can remember which video I'll link it down below but I'll at least link their channel because I really enjoy their channel. They got me through graduate school, you guys. They were, they're just so positive. They're lovely people and I love watching them do all kinds of awesome stuff and I love their baby Jackson. So, into the stock pot with the lemon juice. And I'm only using um, half of the lemon. We're gonna reserve the other half for a second batch of jam I'm making. Same with the zest, half of the zest goes in, not the full amount. While that is boiling or coming up to a boil, we are going to combine our pectin and our sugar. Okay, so I'm getting um, a bowl here. Let me scoot that back a little. Bowl, and then I have here packs. I buy um, two pack. We're just gonna use one box of the Sure Gel powdered pectin. Um, you can make like natural jams without the box pectin, um, and I've done it a couple of times. It's just for this flavor, this is what I do, and I haven't been able to successfully recreate the same flavor and consistency with any other method like honey or um, freezer jam or a natural set. I just haven't been able to do it. And since this is our, our, you know, sort of popular product, I I just keep jamming with it. And there are people who just don't mind this. I don't mind it either. Um, if, you know, you're eating like mass quantities of jam every day, then yes, I think I, think I would mind it. But, you know, for a PB&J every once in a while or, you know, some jam on toast every once in a while, I think it's, it's gonna be okay. So, and then I have my sugar. Um, just so you know, my sugar is a different color. It is the um, Holston Sweeteners Organic Sugar, which is like such a contradiction that I just put that in there, right? But um, <laughs> it's what I use for everything. 
I do think it has a better flavor. So I like buying it. I get the big, the big box from Costco. So the camera, you can't see because my sugar container is so high, but I'm measuring out into the pectin um, an additional five cups of sugar. And I'm just going to combine it with a whisk. Okay, so that's a total, if we count the sugar in the macerated berries, that's a total of seven cups, which is actually three cups shy of the recipe on the Sure Gel Pectin Packet. So um, if you did want to use those three extra cups of sugar, you could probably get your jam to set in half the time that mine is going to. I don't notice a huge brightness or fruit flavor quality difference. I do notice the jam is a heck of a lot sweeter when I add that much amount of sugar. It does set beautifully really quickly, but in my mind, it's just a very sugary sweet jam. Um, so I, I have experimented over the years with adding less and less and less sugar. Um, the two cups to macerate plus the five cups seems to be like a happy medium where it's still a sweet jam um, because it's a vanilla undertone, it's gonna taste even sweeter, right? Which makes it lovely, lovely on desserts or for kids or anything. It's a great jam, don't get me wrong, but if you're looking for a sharper strawberry flavor, I actually have another jam for you and I will show that um, after we finish strawberry vanilla. There's just a few minor differences. But seven cups total instead of 10. So this is um, a light, less sugar, not, not low in sugar by any means, but less sugar than um, some other jam recipes out there. Figuring out how to do more effective like honey sweetened jams is something on my to-do list. It's just not something I've perfected yet. So I'm not gonna, not gonna share it with you until I have it. I have it right where I'm happy with it. So now um, what I'm gonna do is actually use my immersion blender and just lightly get the strawberries um, mushed up that are in the pot. So let me show you that. Okay, so as it turns out, I could not get the camera angle right to show you the immersion blender, but it is right here and I just, you know, click it on and whir it around until most of the berries are chunked into um, liquid or very small solids. I did quarter these strawberries as I put them into macerate. And so what you'll see now is it's just started to come up to a boil. So I'm gonna get cracking. Um, but doing this does create, like this is the foam I'm talking about. It does tend to create more foam doing it this way, but um, I really like the flavor you get from marinating almost the whole berries. So I, I tend to let it go. I'm not gonna skim this foam until I add the pectin, but um, I will do that right now. I'll just show you. I'll keep this angle. We'll come over here. We'll get our sugar and pectin, and we'll just pour that all in. And then I'm gonna grab the rubber scraper and just stir. And you can see there's still some chunks of strawberries, but we also have a good bit of liquid. We also got a really good bit of liquid from macerating them. It released all of their, their juices ahead of time. Okay, so looks like the pectin is all incorporated. I'm gonna store that in the same container or on top of it that I used to store my foam skimmer and we're just gonna let this boil and you know what I'm actually going to here I'll turn this on so you can see there's more chunks than I thought so here it goes Okay, so the jam is um, not quite boiling yet after we add the pectin. It takes it just a few minutes, but once it does start to boil, it should boil for 15 to 20 minutes. Now, if you add that extra bit of sugar, you'll probably get it done in 10. 
um, which again, you know, it quicker cooking time really can positively impact the flavor of your jam. You get more fruit flavor. We've done some things to counteract that that I think add complexity and layers to the flavor, such as macerating the fruit, adding a flavoring like vanilla into the macerating liquid, and then um, brightening with some lemon zest and lemon juice. So I think you get a more complex and just as delicious jam and um, a little bit lower sugar with this longer boiling time. So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna show you once it starts boiling, I will be using this, um, it's an instant read digital thermometer and I'll be sticking it into the jam because jam will set at 220 degrees. Usually what I will do is pull it out at like 219, just shy, and let it kind of come up for that final degree. And um, cause I don't want, the last thing I want is the jam to overset. I, do not appreciate jam that is overly hardened. It just has an, an unpleasant mouthfeel, I think. So I would rather jam be underset than over, which is opposite what I used to do when I was first learning to make jam. I thought, you know, the, the goal is to get the jam set, right? So if I would tilt to the jar and it moved just the slightest, I would be so annoyed with myself. But no, I want, I want slight movement when I tilt the jar. That way when I put it into the fridge after I open it, it's, it's gonna be perfect, so. Um, I'm gonna check on that and then I'll show you guys if it's boiling, we'll be skimming foam and checking temperature for the next 15 or so minutes. Okay, so as you can see, it really is bubbling now. Um, so I am going to quickly check the temperature. And yep, yeah, we're getting real close. So we're gonna start skimming foam. To do this, I just take my little serving spoon here and I just take it off the top and then I tilt it into my measuring cup. Save the foam. The foam is utterly delicious. I mix it into ice cream and I make strawberry ice cream with it. It tastes super yummy. My daughter will just come eat it straight like this, like it's a treat. Okay, so we've gotten a lot of the foam out. I'm sort of stirring carefully. I'm holding it way up here, guys just because um, we are on high and jam, hot jam is very hot and it burns a lot. So <laughs> stirring carefully, but you do wanna stir. See how it's sticking a little? That means we're getting close. I'm gonna check its temperature one more time. Turning this on. kind of want to move it around because it's not a liquid you know it's going to be different temperatures kind of in different places but we are getting there we have a little bit more foam to skim not too much so we'll kind of wait here um the only reason sorry that is um a lot of steam from the water bath canner right here you know it's bubbling away so it's just shooting this way and i don't have the uh the overhead vent on because it makes so much noise. But um, it's, a, it's like a sauna in here. But you just, you wanna skim the foam because um, it will create air in your jars, which can impact not only flavor and quality and its overall appearance, but um, the safety. If you have a lot of air in there, and that, mean, that just means more bacteria and um, a shorter shelf life for your canned product. So we don't want that having to stand way back here to keep the camera out of the steam. Adventures in learning to vlog while making jam. Oh look, I made a mess. <laughs> I'll clean it up later. So yeah, I think I say in another video um, about the foam and that one will either be coming before this video or after, I'm not sure, but it's it's a video where my jam was actually too loose and I had to rebatch it and I show you how to do that. So look for that video coming up soon too. Um, one more temperature check here. Let's see. Move it around. Yep, we're getting real close. Okay, I'll come back in about two minutes and I'll show you guys. Okay, I just tested it and we're at about 216, so we're really close. Getting really close. I'm still stirring from way up high. 
I'm not gonna show the thermometer because I have to, it's a two-handed operation when it gets to this because it can splatter and burn my hand so easily. So um, I'll show you though, it's getting really close. You can just tell by the way it's bubbling, the sound of it. It just, it feels and looks thicker and it's splattering more the thicker it gets. Okay, so I have pulled it off the stove. It is beautifully um, thick jam. I did end up pulling it at about 218. So um, this is a batch for us, like this isn't for a customer, so I'm being a little less picky than normal. But <laughs> if it's loose, if it's too loose, you know, it'll be for us and I, I won't mind that one bit. So um, I am going to put the camera down and try to find a good angle to show you how I put it into the jars. Okay, we're all filled, and as you can see, I had some oopsies there. So, um, because it's a messy business, and it's pretty thick, what you wanna do is actually take just a lightly wet paper um, towel or cloth and wipe the um, rims really well so that you're sure you're gonna get a really good seal. Okay, so we have filled and um, wiped and then put the lids on all of our jars. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my jar lifting tongs. Um, these are special for mason jars and you can get them, I get mine at the grocery store, I think. But um, it was been a while, but they're readily available. And then you're just going to take the lid off of your canning pot. Make sure the heat's on nice and high, and then um, you're gonna lift your jars. No, I'm gonna check this one, actually. What's he doing? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so in the fast forward, the, the time lapse I just showed you, you'll notice I had an extra ring, and so I, I took all of the lids off of the jars just to double check because I was missing well, well, now that one's bad. The inner seal to one jar, and I took them off to make sure because if you have a double, a double seal in the jar, obviously that's not a good thing. And I did. I had a double seal, so I'm gonna do that one, and then I'm gonna get a new one for the one I just dropped. Oh, he's not clean anymore. Okay, all set. So no double, no double seals. I picked him up and he just looked funny, so he's he's now much happier. And we're ready to go in the canner. I don't have um, a rack or anything. I just very carefully place them into the water. And you want to do it when the jam is hot. If you have cold jam going into hot water, jars cracking. Or if you sit there and kind of just hold part of it for a while, like you're scared then it could crack very easily. But I usually have zero issues with cracked jars. And I put about four in at a time. Pop the lid on, and they get 10 minutes. These are half tight jars. So the water needs to be boiling. It needs to be at least an inch above um, the jar top for it to be
be safe enough to seal properly and then they get 10 minutes. These are, again, half pint, eight ounce jars. Okay, we are about to be. So, we'll turn it off. And we'll take the lid off. And then I will get my jar lifters. Reach in. And then I'm gonna take him and set him all the way at the back. Right like that. And I'm gonna do that for all four jars. Okay, um, all four jars are there at the back. Ignore my messy living room. We're getting ready to go camping, you guys, and there's just a lot happening back there, so ignore all that. But I put my jars at the back, and um, now I'm just gonna put these four in the water bath canner, just like we did the first time. Right like that. Okay, so we just pulled the final four jars, that's a total of eight jars total, out of the water bath canner. And hopefully you'll get um, on camera here a sound of, it's like a pop. And that means um, that is the seal of the jar. So there's like a, see how I can push that? It's like a popper. <laughs> Once it comes out of the water bath can canner, it depresses completely and permanently and that's that seal that's the pop you want to hear is the seal tightening um once that pops you know the ring is not important you can you can actually store them with just this and some people do because they're pretty um you can like wrap fabric and ribbons and other things um we are actually going to get started on a second batch of jam i have more jars laid out ready to go and this is going to be my personal favorite flavor which is called strawberry rose. So I have the same process as the first batch, the strawberry vanilla, except I have macerated all of my berries in two cups of sugar and a little bit of rose water. And what the rose does is it actually, I think intensifies the strawberry flavor and you don't get floral on the tip of your tongue, you get it on the back end. So we're gonna add a little bit more when we're actually doing the jam, but um, most of the flavor has been sort of marinated into the strawberries through the maceration process. And again, it doesn't taste like roses. It tastes like really intense, vibrant strawberry. So that's what we're gonna do. And there's, it's the same recipe, just a few adjustments. So same amount of lemon juice, same amount of lemon zest, same amount of sugar, just um, instead of vanilla bean, we're using rose water. Okay, so I've put everything together just like I did before. I have my pectin mixed with my sugar. I have my berries going with my lemon juice. Um, uh, rather than scraping the vanilla bean, you know, there is no vanilla bean this time. There's only, um, really, I would say a half a teaspoon of rose water into the 10 cups of strawberries and the two cups of sugar that I've macerated. And then um, we're not gonna add it just yet, but when we add the pectin and the sugar, we're gonna add another half teaspoon of the rose water. And that will bring out this lovely, like I said, intense, vibrant strawberry flavor on the tip of your tongue and this subtle floral finish on the back end. It's really nice. So I'm just gonna let this boil. I will um, immersion blend it up just like I did before. And then I will try to show you adding the rose water and then um, a few more steps along the way. Okay, we are back. It's time to add the sugar, pectin, and the last little bit of rose water. So, in goes the sugar and pe pectin. And then just a half a teaspoon of rose water. in really well same process as before so that is the finished strawberry rose jam as you can see I have a little bit of foam I'm gonna skim before I um, put it in jars but it will go in the water bath canner and be all good 
So that is it from Whole Family Homestead in the kitchen this time. I hope you learned a little bit about um, how I make jam and why I make some of the decisions I make and a little bit about the flavors I make. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, please leave a comment down below. Um, as always, subscribe, like, and if you can find us on wholefamilyhomestead.com for our blog or our Facebook page or an Instagram. Have a wonderful time and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.